Good morning darlings, welcome to a new daily vlog. Today I've got some really exciting events going on and I wanted to share the whole day with you. So it's currently quarter past six in the morning. I woke up um, about 10 minutes ago, so you've not missed much so far, but I wanted to share with you the entire process of getting ready because I've got two events later on. I wanted to show you how I kind of adapt a day's hair and makeup to transform it from one event to another so that could be really handy hopefully if you um, <laughs> if maybe you're going from work to a night out but initially the first big event that's going on today is day one of Royal Ascot so I'm sure most of you will have heard about Royal Ascot it's a really big event here in the UK and today is day one I'm gonna take you along and show you exactly what we get up to and then this evening at about 7 p.m. we have a premiere for a film called yesterday which I'm really excited for so I'll be taking you along to both but first of all let's get started on my skincare and then I can go and make myself a coffee so as I recently got back from Kefalonia I'm just trying to keep my skin hydrated and tanned and glowing so this is pretty much gonna be my routine for the rest of summer but especially when I have any special events coming up so first of all rose is a really lovely deep hydrating product so that actually runs across most of the products that I'm gonna be putting on my face this morning starting off with my serum this is from fresh cosmetics it's the deep hydration face serum so I'm just gonna pop a couple of pumps of that in my hand and press that onto my face I'm going to use the eye cream from the same range, just a tiny bit, because I don't want this to spend um, a long time sinking in. The next product that I'm going to use is part of both my skincare routine and my tanning routine. My tanning routine actually started, well it's continuous, I'll explain that later on, um, but I intensified it, let's say, last night. I will show you some footage of that in a second. But first of all, I'm going to be misting my face with the James Reed Gradual Tan. So this you can use over three or four days to build up a lovely gradual tan. Or if you just want a really soft glow, you can just apply it once or twice. The Gradual Tan H2O Tan Mist for Face. So. This is also infused with rose, so it's lovely and hydrating. So if you do find your skin gets a little bit dry, a little bit thirsty in summer, and let's be honest, I think most people have dehydrated skin. I personally know that that is my skin type, and if your skin is dehydrated, it's generally just not very happy. So as well as obviously drinking more water, I try and make sure that all of my skin and tanning products are just kind of helping where they can. This is a really lovely cooling mist, so even on a warm morning like this, it's just really refreshing to apply. You can apply it after you've done your makeup but personally I like it to be directly onto my skin clean skin with just a really nice gentle serum on and I would say I use this maybe every other day sometimes every day if I want to get a really intense tan but I would say every other day generally and I find a mist is the easiest way to apply apply tan to my face I know I've mentioned it so many times in the past in Q&A's and other get ready with me videos but misting for me is just the quickest and easiest way of getting tan onto my face you don't have to sit there rubbing you don't need to worry about washing your hands afterwards and things like that and this one is also as you can see a really fine mist that just helps you to get a lovely even tan so I just close my eyes and One thing I would say when applying is just, as you probably saw, move your face so that you get the sides. You also want to get just underneath the chin as well, so just kind of make sure you're getting the full area. And this is not technically what it's designed for, but as I said, I do like to do to my hands what I do to my face. So because obviously I wash my hands after applying my fake tan to my body, and I wash them so regularly, I just want them to be as bronzed as the rest of me. So. What I would suggest when you're tanning your hands is make a shape as though you're holding a big grapefruit so that your fingers have just a very delicate curve to them. And then once again, make sure you get your hands from every angle. Oh, and another top tip is make sure you take your rings off first. I never take off my engagement ring, but I do just spin it around so it's at the thinnest point. There's no big diamond in the way. Um, but the rings on my other hand, I just make sure I take them off before applying tan. So to be honest, the rest of my getting ready routine doesn't really start for another hour, so I am going to insert the footage that I shot last night of my night before tanning routine while this tan sinks in, and then I'm going to go make myself a coffee. So without further ado, this is what I did last night to get myself super bronzed and ready for today. 
Good evening, darlings. So it's the night before the big events tomorrow, and I am about to start my evening skincare tanning routine. So, so far, I've literally got out the shower five minutes ago, towel dried myself. In the shower, I used just a normal cleanser, and I actually exfoliated my skin using exfoliating gloves this morning, and the last time I epilated was last night. So that's all kind of relevant when it comes to tanning, because you just want to make sure the skin is as prepared as possible. I really hope you guys are going to find this useful, because I would say my tanning routine is probably one of my most asked questions ever here on YouTube and I love to be tanned all the time no matter the season no matter if I've got a special event or if I'm going on holiday I just like to be always tanned and the great part um, of this routine is that actually it really easily integrates into my normal skincare routine that is one of the main reasons why I love James Reed tanning products because something that's really unique for them is that they mix what I would call luxury skincare with tanning and when I'm tanned I just feel so much more confident, I feel so much better about how I look, my skin feels fantastic from the outside in and the James Reed products have ingredients within them like skincare ingredients that really help me to get that glow with my skin as well as through having a tan. So. There are just so many reasons why I love to be bronzed and get that lovely golden glow, but um, I'm going to be doing everything tonight in preparation for tomorrow, but I would say that I pretty much do this every two or three nights anyway, just to keep the tan consistent throughout the year. So I'm going to start, actually what I normally do is tone my face. As I mentioned in the shower, I used um, a normal cleanser. I actually used the new Elemis Pro Collagen Neroli Cleanser, which was heavenly, so balmy for the skin. And now I'm gonna tone with the Rehydrating Rose Toner from Neil's Yard. I just pop some of that on a reusable um, face pad. I get a lot of questions about these as well. I will leave them linked down below. And this just makes sure my skin is completely clean fresh, ready for applying a tan. As you might be able to see, my face is not like mega pale at the moment because the tan that I'm gonna be using on my face where is it in my cupboard? It was hidden behind my toothbrush, where was I? So the tan that I use in the evenings is the James Reed Gradual Tan Sleep Mask Face Retinol. This is what it looks like. You've got the gorgeous little gold stripes around the edging there. This is a really special product. The reason why I love it is because I don't have to forfeit my evening ingredients on my skin in order to get a tan the next day. So this has got encapsulated retinol in it and James Reed were the first brand to do this so it's a really special product because the encapsulated retinol basically slowly releases as you sleep which as we know is a time when the skin regenerates it's when you should really pamper your skin at the most and retinol helps to basically um, encourage the skin cells to renew so it helps you have a glowing complexion it helps fight against fine lines and wrinkles and generally I just wake up with a better skin day when I use retinol in my skincare I would say it is quite a strong ingredient this is a fairly gentle version but I would say that you want to maybe start once a week with this then maybe build up to twice a week I would say that now I'm pretty much up to three times a week and not only are you building up your skin's tolerance to retinol and therefore getting more and more glow every time you use it but you're also building up the tan so this is a gradual tan I like to apply a pump and a half I would say Maybe if I'm using it three times a week, then just one full pump of this onto my face before I go to bed. So I've applied it to cleansed and toned skin. Sometimes I'll use a serum. I find that that doesn't alter how the product works. If my skin's a little bit dehydrated, then I might mix it in with a serum. This is the Cordially SOS Thirst Quench Serum. This one I really like because it sinks into the skin really quickly and it just instantly hydrates the skin. This product in itself is really hydrating for the skin. It's got hyaluronic acid in there, it's got aloe vera, so it's also really great to take with you when you go on holiday. And that would actually be a top tip of mine. So this is, I think it's 50ml. 
yeah 50 mils so even if you're going hand luggage only you can still take it with you when you travel but my face tends to tan a lot more slowly obviously I wear like a factor of 50 on my face because I don't want to get any burning or aging so I like to ensure that I have got a really good fake tan for my face with me when I go on holidays sometimes I take drops with me and you'll see my drops in a second um, but this is just a really great way of keeping the skin hydrated glowing and gradually tanned while you are abroad one thing to remember though because this has got retinol in it it does mean you have to ensure that you put on an SPF the next day I would always recommend wearing an SPF but you 100% must remember to put on an SPF if you are using a retinol anyway without further ado I'm gonna pop this on so it's really easy to apply as I said gradual color but just lasts for days and days at a time one pump is actually a pretty good amount so I just apply this and it's like a gel water consistency so the skin doesn't feel sticky it doesn't feel like it's being plastered in anything too thick just make sure that you rub that in really evenly I like to take it down my neck and even onto my chest as well. A little top application tip if you have got light colored eyebrows like me is your reusable cotton pad with a little bit of your toner left in it. If I just turn the mirror around, I just like to rub this over my eyebrows um, just to ensure there's no excess product there because I do find that it can tint the brows a little bit. So that just helps to ensure that no product goes in my brows. And then I just like to smudge it around the neckline, um, hairline even, just to make sure that it really is right up to the edges. And that's pretty much sunk in straight away. I don't feel sticky. I don't feel like I've got a bit of product on my skin. Next step is to wash your hands. So that's the face sorted. Next is the body. And this is one of the most ingenious tanning products I've ever tried. These are the James Reed Gradual Tan H2O Tan Drops. What I love about these is that they are so bespoke and you can really amp your tan up or keep it really gradual and natural. I like to amp it up, as you can imagine, and they are just so easy to use. These are water-based tanning drops, so you can apply them with your body lotion, and it's not gonna make the body lotion go a strange consistency or anything. It's just literally like applying your favorite body lotion, but you also get a tan. They're also slightly caramelly in their color, as you'll see in a second, so you get an instant sheen. And just like the um, face mask, the sleep mask for the face. They've also got hyaluronic acid and aloe vera in them. So you're getting hydration effects as well and the hydration effects from your body lotion. So they really are just so, so useful. So what I'm doing is pumping a few pumps of body lotion into my hand and then it recommends applying one to four drops for a natural tan or like six to eight for a deeper tan i like to do it body part by body part so i'd say i add four or five um into each kind of section of my body i'm not afraid to go super bronze with these as you can see you get like a pipette and the color of the drops is just a really soft caramelly color which does give a little bit of a guide color i feel a little bit like a crazy beauty scientist when i'm doing this so i just apply one two three four four and a half <laughs> to my body lotion mix it all up just in the palm of my hand blends in really really easily and then apply it onto my body So that is all applied all over my body. I can get my pajamas on straight away because there's no um, like sticky fake tan sensation. There's no smell other than the smell of my body lotion. So just the easiest way of adding a gradual tanning and continual tanning process into your evening routine. Here is a close up of the bottle in case you want to screenshot it. I will of course leave all of these tanning products linked down below and James Reed have so kindly given a discount code that you can get 20% off anything on their website, any of my favorite tanning products. So I'll leave that code linked up on the screen here and also written down below alongside the links to these products if you want to try any of them which obviously I would highly recommend if you want to be glowing and golden all throughout summer um, so yeah make sure you wash your hands thoroughly after doing that I usually use a mist which you guys are gonna see me doing in the morning um, just to mist over my hands to make sure that they stay as tanned as the rest of my body this tan I mean I would say it lasts up to 
a week but I just keep applying it like I'm never not tanned because I just use it two or three times a week as much or as little as I want to really build up that bespoke color and as you can see my skin just looks glowing and fresh on my face and I don't feel sticky I don't feel smelly I just feel like I've had a really good luxurious skincare routine so it's as easy as that um, I'm off to bed now I will see you guys again in the morning back to this morning and the first thing that I do while getting myself ready is make myself a coffee. Okay, so we're back upstairs. I am fueled with coffee and it's about half an hour later. I've been downstairs doing a couple of emails and just getting the dogs their breakfast, stuff like that. And I'm gonna do my makeup now. So obviously my skin is beautifully hydrated and gradually getting bronzer as the days goes on with the um, tan mist. And I usually just apply my makeup straight on top of that. So I'm not gonna do this really thoroughly, like a thorough get ready with me, because as you guys know, my makeup doesn't really change. Um, I'm not a makeup artist. I don't do anything crazy and experimental. So I'll whiz through it, but where there are differences to my normal makeup, I will show you. So actually the first difference is with the foundation. As you guys know I'm a huge fan of Bare Minerals and their most I would say long lasting and heavy coverage foundation is the Bare Pro. This is what Sophie wore on her wedding day and as you may have seen her skin and all her pictures just looked incredible and for me it is a go-to for special events but it can be quite thick and because Royal Ascot is, um, Royal Ascot, the correct pronunciation, is mostly outside it's not really the kind of place where you go with a really full face of makeup so I'm going to lighten it up a little bit with NARS Sheer Glow. I don't actually know if I've done this combination before but um, yeah let's give it a try. Normally I would pump my foundation on the back of my hand but I'm going to do it just in the palm of my hand because I have got the tan mist on the back of my hand. It's already getting a bit messy so let's get it on my face been using the IT Cosmetics um, Heavenly Luxe Complexion Brush a lot lately and I find that this gives me a lot of control as to where my makeup goes and the areas that I can build up and areas that I can leave a little bit lighter as well. As you might be able to see my foundation is actually a little bit lighter than my skin at the moment. I need to get a darker shade but I will correct that with bronzer in a few moments. This is the By Terry Balm de Rose Lip Balm. Uh, this was in the In The Fro Feel Unique Jet Setter Kit and it is just perfect for getting rid of foundation lips and prepping the lips ahead of lipstick. Continuing with the base, this is the new Tom Ford Emotion Proof Concealer and it's just a really lovely creamy concealer in the shade Tawny which for me is the perfect under eye concealer that doesn't give me like light bulb under eyes but it does illuminate the area, doesn't crease and it's just really soft um, and really hydrating as well for this area which is very important for a full day of makeup wearing. And I weirdly have some spots on my chin so I need something a little bit thicker. I'm going to pop on some Laura Mercier concealer directly onto those. I don't always powder my whole face but because I do really need to kind of set things for today I'm going to be using the Laura Mercier translucent powder on this really big fluffy Real Techniques brush and I find that this brush just makes um, the application really good for me because it doesn't paste too much product onto my skin but just a really light 
uh, layer, if you will, of powder to set everything down and stop any areas of shine emerging. Then I'm going to bring the glow back with my By Terry. This is the Brightening CC powder in the shade Sunny Flash. This has become such a favourite of mine. It's a gorgeous, well it used to have a beautiful rose pattern on there, but because I've used it so much, that's kind of fading away now. It has the most gorgeous scent to it, also with rose being a key ingredient, like so many of the products that I'm loving at the moment. I just take a fan brush and this gives the most beautiful very very soft highlight I would say. I am going to use a highlight, um, a proper highlight later, but it just gives the whole complexion a beautiful glow and just brings back the healthy shine that sometimes gets lost when you use a normal powder. Not essential but a luxury step that I just love. Then I'm using this giant Le Mer bronzer and I'm using my very precise Bare Minerals Seamless Shaping and Finish brush and this I'm just taking in the areas w really which are kind of like contour areas and any areas that would naturally catch the sun. To be honest I find that with the James Reed Tan Mist my face is pretty bronzed anyway so it doesn't actually need too much bronzer on top which for me just looks a lot more healthy, a lot more natural so yeah normally I'd go really overboard on the bronzer but to be honest I feel like just a little touch of it thank god because the La Mer bronzer is not the most affordable um yeah that's pretty much the routine so I'm going to finish off the complexion actually and just do a little bit of blush this annoyingly I think might be a sold out limited edition but it's from the Bare Minerals Crystalline Glow Palette it's got a highlight um a kind of highlighty bronzer and a rose quartz blush which I love another rose product and I just apply that with a Sigma brush I really should have got my brows done before today because they are gappy, they are not the right colour and they are overgrown. So let's see what magic we can do with the NARS Brow Perfector. So I've managed to fill in the gaps and create a little bit more shape with the NARS Brow Pencil. Now I'm going to use the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. This has got a really lovely comb in it. So I'm not sure if you can see but it's got some really like thin bristles. My ring is still the other way around from tanning. Um, and these just help to really beautifully like comb up the brows. Also almost like separate out the brow hairs, makes them more like individual. And I like to brush the brows up to give the impression of a more voluminous brow, which I definitely don't have, and then the gel just very softly, without making them go crispy or anything, sets them for the full day. And you can never see like lumps of product either, so it's a really nice natural but set brow. Paul and Joe mirror is also definitely going in my handbag for today. I honestly sometimes feel once I've got my base and my brows done and a bit of lip gloss that I would actually be quite happy going out like this, like with a totally nude eye makeup look. I don't even have any lash extensions at the moment. But sometimes I really think that a glowing base and good brows is all you need. However, I am going to do something on my um, eyes. When I want my makeup to look a little bit more natural, sometimes what I love to do is use complexion products on my eyes. So that's what I'm going to do today. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit. And I'm going to take the middle highlight bronzing shade all over my eyelid. With a different brush, I'm taking this highlight shade from the palette underneath my brows. And then this slightly darker shade I'm going to pop in the crease. So that is basically when you have your eye open, you're almost tracing the half moon shape. So like this, literally just following the crease of the eye very gently with the brush. And that just kind of makes the whole eye look a little bit more intense. With a third brush, I'm going to blend those three colours kind of in together to make it a bit softer. And finally, because my dress is pink, I'm going to go in with the blush shade. This is a little bit of a dusky, almost purple pink, which I think will make it really nice and muted for the eyes. And I'm just going to put that right in the middle of the lid, and this should really just draw the whole look in together. I don't usually wear eyeliner, but I'm going to pop a tiny bit of the Bare Minerals One Fine Line, literally like super close to my lash line, just to give the lashes a bit more definition. And that is what you might call the world's most subtle eyeliner. Next is mascara. I'm going to curl my lashes and then use the Tom Ford Lash Raise Mascara. This has become a real favourite of mine lately. It's got little fibres in there so it makes it look like you've actually got false lashes or just really voluminous and many, many eyelashes. I absolutely love it. And it really just separates and makes me look more awake basically, so I'm a big fan. Starting off by curling the lashes as usual. 
I do find with this you especially have to wipe off the excess. So this eye's done and this eye doesn't have mascara on yet. I would say one of my top tips, especially with mascaras that have got fibres in them, is that you can always add but you can't take away. So really wipe off the excess from your brush before going in and apply that first layer. It'll really separate out the lashes and get every lash coated with a very thin layer of mascara. And then if you want more, you can always add in another layer and another layer, as many layers as you want, build up as much volume as you want. But if you go in with a really chunky layer to start with, I find it just kind of makes the lashes all all group together and you can't really separate them out afterwards so yeah always start light and build up mascara if that is um, a tip that you guys might find useful so at this stage I'm pretty much gonna pause my makeup and do the finishing touches once I'm dressed because then I can get a better idea of the whole look but I am going to be spraying on the body shop skin defense multi protection face mist this is SPF 45 I've just realized oops, <laughs> I've just realized it doesn't say if it's UVA and UVB, yes it does on the back, okay. Anti-pollution, antioxidant, anti-dullness, enriched with community trade marula oil. So you cannot use this if you've got individual lash extensions, which I know many of us do in summer. Mine kind of fell out um, while I was in Catalonia because of all the sprays I was putting on my face, but I think I'm just gonna leave my lashes natural for the rest of summer. So it means I can spray to my heart's content and I do love a face mist. So this is SPF 45, very important because the um, product that I used on my face last night, as you saw, included retinol, which does mean that you need to protect your skin a little bit more when it comes to the sun the next day, but in general, of course, you should be wearing at least back to 30 every day. Once again, I'm going to take this with me because it's so easy to reapply. If it does end up staying sunny, I'll probably apply this again just as we um, maybe have our lunch or something. Always wipe your nails after applying something like that because it can actually affect the colour of your nail varnish. I'm going to get dressed. I'll see you in a second. Okay, dress is on and thankfully it looks perfect i hadn't tried it on before this morning very risky um so yeah very pleased that it looks amazing i've also just popped on some jewelry keeping with the kind of pink and floral theme i've gone for my little omega i worked with omega a couple of years ago and it's the most precious jewelry aside from obviously my engagement ring that i own um so yeah i've got the little omega flower earrings on and matching bracelet i might put on the matching necklace um no, I think I'm going to leave it without a necklace for today. And then I've got a couple of rings from Monica Vinader. I really love um, this one here. It's like a double band of champagne diamonds. And it's in the sale at the moment, so I'll leave a link down below, along with everything else. And then I've just got a couple of my usual Pandora and Monica Vinader bracelets on this hand. So next is the most challenging step, which is the hat and the hair. So because, that <laughs> sounds like a nursery rhyme, the hat and the hair. Um, because Charlie and I are going in the royal enclosure, that is the area with the strictest dress code rules. So unlike, I think, any other races in the world, um, or any other event, pretty much, there are some really strict rules which have been developed by Asuka over the years. So for example, in the royal enclosure, the straps of your dress have to be at least an inch thick the dress has to be I think it's like a couple of inches above the knee I used to know them all off by heart because I used to actually work as a dress code assistant so I'd be on the door helping people with their dress code and adjusting them if need be and the hat the base of your hat has to be at least four inches which this most definitely is luckily as well color wise it is absolutely perfect because this hat is on a headband um, I think I'm actually gonna have my hair up I feel a lot more comfortable with my hair up and also I think it looks a little bit more more elegant and ladylike so let's get rid of the tags on this hat I bought it before I even had the dress I often think starting with a hat is the easiest because there are more dresses available than there are hats um, this was from Peter Jones which is pretty much the Chelsea version of John Lewis I washed my hair yesterday um, <clears throat> and I did curl it for some photos so let's see what state it's in since I had my hair coloured, it's quite dry. Um, I haven't like found that happy medium yet, so still figuring out how to style it now that it's a bit shorter. So I could have it down and like swoop to the side. I'm not sure if that's the right way around. 
Ooh la la. You can actually fix um, the netting with hairspray if you really want to. So I just tied my hair into a little ponytail um, and I quite like how it looks up. It's just a lot more like simple around my face area. You've got this really lovely bit of netting which goes over my face and I think it just, you know, it's quite busy with my hair down as well. So what I'm gonna do is take with me, because I can't sit in the car with my hat on, it's just a little bit strange. So I'm gonna take with me hairbrush, hairspray, hair bobbles and hair clips, and then I'll just do my hair very quickly in a low ponytail like this when we're in the car park at Ascot. So yeah, finishing touches. I'm going to apply some lip gloss. Another perk of having my hair back is that there's no risk of my hair going into my lip gloss. So I'm going to use the Dior Lip Maximizer Hyaluronic Lip Plumper. And I'm just going to gather my bits and bobs, my hat, my bag, my shoes, etc. And it's time to go. <laughs> Okay, so it's an hour and a half or so later. Got stuck in a little bit of traffic coming through London, but we've made it. We've come up to the Royal uh, Royal Enclosure entrance. We're about to go in past the dress code assistants, so fingers crossed, we're all dressed perfectly. Charlie's got a very smart suit on, looking good, darling, in the grey and pink. You got some, what's the brand of the waistcoat? Uh, so, the, so it's all from Moss Bros, yeah. but the, the suit is Ted Baker from Moss Bros, and then the linen double breasted waistcoat is actually just Moss Bros own brand. Nice. Yeah. So Charlie's little pink waistcoat matches my pink dress and the hat. Got it managed, managed to get it looking good, just sat in the back seat of the car. And then my bag, I haven't actually showed you yet, is from the Radley Royal Ascot collection. It's a little kind of hat box shaped bag. Perfectly fits in my camera, my battery pack, my phone, and a couple of makeup essentials, as well as our tickets. So we've got our little, this is the little Royal Enclosure badge, and our ticket for the Rose Terrace. So I'm going to get Charlie to show you my outfit of the day properly and then we're going to head inside. photos downloading that we've just been snapping away um charlie bought your sony what is alpha. it the alpha sony alpha and i've just transferred them to the phone no rest for the wicked this is a work day so i am just transferring the pictures yeah this is our lovely little office so beautiful we've got some lovely florals on the table we've got coffees we've got our official program so we can see who we're going to be betting on today during the races Jackson? let's have a look Sadly it started to pour with rain at the end of our time 
at Ascot, but we actually bumped into a couple of Charlie's family friends and Charlie's sister, Scarlett, who works at Ascot, managed to get us um, our upgrade into the Rose Terrace. So thank you, Scarlett, if you're watching. It was Shout epic. out. Shout out to Scaz One. And uh, yeah, so we had some drinks with our friends overlooking the last race or the second to last race. And then beeline for the car because it started to pour with rain. Florida style. Florida style. I've just topped up a little bit of makeup in the car because we have approximately minus 10 minutes to get changed very quickly and turn around to head to the yesterday premiere, which is in Leicester Square. Uh, I think I'm literally just gonna change my dress, blend my eyeshadow a little bit more, brush my teeth and yeah, spritz basically head out fragrance. the door. Yeah, spritz some fragrance. Charlie's gonna hit, have hit. a coffee, not that you've had enough today. I think you, this will be your seventh shot of coffee today. I don't know. Yeah, probably. But we need to get I this man coffee. some food. So yeah, it's gonna be a quick turnaround. I'll vlog at home if I can, but I'm not making any promises, but we're nearly home. So yeah, let's get ready to go again. And the world record has just been set for the quickest changeover known to mankind. So I've just whopped on, whopped on, put on a new dress, also Ted Baker. They very kindly sent this to me the other day. So I'm gonna put it to good use on the red carpet this afternoon slash evening. Um, the film is meant to start in half an hour so hopefully we can beat the tubes and get there as soon as we can. Charlie's just popping his shoes on. I've just basically blended my makeup, added a little bit of colour to my cheeks with some blusher, popped on... actually this is a really old lipstick, one that I have had in my collection for a long time since before I was full-time blogging. This is from a brand called Bite Beauty. I always used to get these from Sephora when we went to um, New York with work and I love it. I popped on a little bit more eyeshadow, blended it all out, another layer of mascara, my favourite little pearl headband to hopefully detract from my tired looking face. I'm going to grab a brolly, hope that the rain doesn't continue to pour. Ready darling? Yeah. He's popping on his monk straps. <laughs> Let's get going. Gonna be on the vlog. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. I'm not going to try and explain um, the film, but I will leave the trailer link down below if you like the Beatles or even if you don't like the Beatles, it is a really brilliant film. Um, I was laughing all the way throughout. It was honestly definitely worth a visit, not only to cinema, but to get on DVD as well. It's the kind of film that I want to watch over and over again. So a really, really fun evening. Charlie was feeling peckish, so he's just ordered a delivery, but I am gonna have a super luxurious evening routine, taking off my makeup because it has been a long day. This makeup has been on my face for far too long. I've got a couple of layers of makeup on. I can't even hold my arm up anymore. That's how exhausted I am. So I'm gonna have a proper double or maybe even triple cleanse. I feel like if I didn't have a tan on right now, I would be looking a little bit scary. One downside that happened this evening is I accidentally scratched my arm, so I've got little marks all over one of the sleeves of this top, so I'm going to douse that in some cold water and hope that I can get it out. So I'm going to end the vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed this one day getting ready with me and special event vlog. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye! Hey!